As the sun rises over LA, it's time to take you back to the city, to the LA Auto Show, downtown at the LA Convention Center, big, spacious, and ready to host all things automotive. With that, let's explore what Honda has cooking. Hey guys, welcome to this episode. Tony Lesane here. I've got Carl Pulley with me from Honda. We're going to talk about innovation and how they continue to raise the bar. We're here and all the proof is in the pudding around us. What's the secret sauce, Carl? Well, you know, Honda's always been about providing new value for the customer. So we're fundamentally an engineering company and we're always thinking about what is what does the customer want? What don't they know that they want yet? And how can we provide that new value? So right from our founding in 1948, and we've been in the US since 1959, we've always thought about, well, what will make a customer's life easier, more fun, and just generally to provide that new value. And so we've got some really wonderful products here that we're showcasing today. A first for the LA Auto Show is the new Prologue. It's our first all electric, battery electric SUV over there. Um, absolutely beautiful. Um, it's gonna have around a 300 mile range. Carl showed me the Prologue, an upcoming battery electric mid-size crossover SUV jointly developed by Honda and GM to be marketed in America for 2024. We started with the styling and design, that front, the lights and the lines, sweet. Styled by Honda Design Studio in Los Angeles, the Prologue is based on the Ultium architecture and the BEV3 platform. Prologue is Honda's first all-electric SUV expected to receive an EPA range rating of 300 miles on a full charge and DC fast charging capable. The walk around featured rounded lines, fluid design cues, not overwhelming, just stylish. As an F1 fan and on-camera reporter doing the coverage, I don't have to tell you, Honda should be over the moon with what Max is doing and the Red Bull team is doing with that engine. No, absolutely, and I mean, Mr. Honda said without racing there would be no Honda mm. because it's kind of a battlefield in that new technology. I mean, you've, you, you, you're, you're fighting against the competition and it drives our engineers, it drives everyone within our company to provide that new value, to provide better performance. Um, and so we're absolutely thrilled. I mean, um, we just announced that Honda Performance Development, which is the American arm of racing for IndyCar and right. IMSA, right. Uh -huh. we are going to be coming under the fold of Honda Racing Corporation, which is the global racing entity for all Honda racing, whether it's um, Formula One, whether it's or motorcycle, Indy, uh, and motorcycle, now it'll be, um, so that's going to be coming. Um, and so we're actually going to be um, involved in some of the Formula One engine development. So here in the US, now we have three uh, Formula One races here in the US. And we've been involved with racing, motorsports racing, going back to Elio Castroneve mm. and it, when he was winning like crazy in the uh, IndyCar League. We know that Honda has a tendency to stay ahead of the curve. Is that a developmental thing, design thing, or is it just written into the DNA? I, I think it's a part of the DNA. So, you know, Sachiro Honda, our founder, he was a self-taught engineer. And a lot of the early developments were really from his passion to help people's lives and in thinking in a, in a very, very different way. And really, every global CEO of, of Honda has been an engineer. So I think that, that says, says something about the yeah, company really in that it's an engineering approach in how to help people. So it's not engineering for engineering's sake. You know, obviously uh, there's a lot of talk about electrification 
and Honda has announced that globally by 2050, we're gonna be carbon neutral with all of our operations, including manufacturing, design, and all of our vehicles. And by 2040, 100% of the vehicles that we sell globally will be a battery electric or a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. Forward thinking guys, and for those of you who are entrepreneurs or pursuing your career, you always wanna look ahead what's over the horizon, Carl helped articulate that. And on a sidebar, guys, when you watch another episode, I did a special on fashion, or of course, auto show style and fashion. Now, I'm a novice, but this guy, he's breaking us off. Well done, Carl. Well, things <laughs> since COVID have changed. People are getting a little bit more relaxed, but I did want to represent, I appreciate a good dressed person, it just shows a, a, a particular focus. Uh, and I think sometimes, you know, they say the emperor's new clothes, but I think oftentimes the way people dress says something about themselves and how they want to be represented, how they want to be seen. And so, you know what? When I wear the three piece, doors seem to open for me <laughs> that they don't when I'm just wearing a, a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Remember that Carl told you, now he's having a good hair day as I am, okay? <laughs> But I'm going to sign off there. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome, Tony. Happen. It we'll was a pleasure. Following. All right. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. You know what to do. Hit the notification bell when you subscribe. If you have questions for myself or Carl, I'll hit them and forward them to him, and we'll get that answered. You know where to find the answer. See you next time. Sam Hughes, Mary. Educate, learn, talk.